Good afternoon everyone, this is Stole You Sweet Roll coming to you with another build tutorial. In today's video, we'll be discussing a topic that you're going to need to understand real well if you're going to replicate my more complicated builds. That topic is support dependent objects, how to break that dependence, and what to do when objects become codependent on support and cannot be deleted. We're also going to do a more in-depth exploration of wall merging. So, let's get started. We're going to start with a few examples of support dependent objects. Basically, dependent objects are any item that snaps directly to another item for support. Mainly floors, walls, and stairs. There are a few others, but we won't be covering them today. Our first example of a support dependent object is a foundation. Now, normally, a foundation is the anchor to all things supported. But, if you snap a foundation to another, and its height is above the snapped foundation's hitbox for support. The snapped foundation becomes dependent to the foundation that is supported. If you try to remove the anchor foundation, you'll get the unsupported message. To fix this, just remove the dependent piece and then you should be able to remove the original foundation. This applies to all of the elements in the build system, but there are a few areas where we can circumvent these restrictions to make objects float. Most of these are pretty easy, but first, I have a disclaimer. There is a potential, when detaching objects from support, that you can unintentionally create situations where those items can become codependent on each other for support, and they can be difficult, if not impossible, to delete in some cases. More on that later. One of the most common uses of support removal is with floating doorways to make floating walls. We did this in the staircase tutorial to make a wall-mounted staircase and an enclosed stairwell. The process is straightforward. Build the doorway and remove the floor under it. However, this does not work with quarter upper floors if they're supporting the wall. Moving on to floating a roof. We've done this a few times before, but it directly requires either the glass building set or the log building set, as those sets allow you to cycle through most of the roof variants with the replace option. Simply build the roof you want to float, and replace it to a flat or slant, depending on the application you've chosen. Then all you need to do is remove the wall that was supporting the roof, and then change the roof back to the original piece using the replace option. Moving on to the next object, top arches. These can be a bit more tricky depending on where you want to float the object. Our first example, we're going to float an arch above this foundation at a height of one wall. There's a couple ways to approach this, but let's do it this way. First, we're going to build up from underneath it with a wall and build the arch on top. Next, we'll snap a slanted roof to the arch. Remember the chain of support here. It goes foundation, wall, slant, roof. If we can break this chain, we can circumvent the support restrictions. So we know we can separate the roof from support with the replace option, so that's where we're going to approach this. Let's build a wall at the bottom of the roof that ties back to the foundation. It's important to note that we can only snap the wall to the foundation, as Bethesda patch snapping objects to the underside of roofs and walls directly. Now, with that in mind, let's go ahead and snap in this wall. With the wall in place, the arch is getting support from two sources, the wall below and the roof above. So let's go ahead and remove the wall below the arch. Now the arch is being supported by the roof. Go ahead and delete the roof. Now the arch is floating. If you get an error message, make sure you deleted the right wall. If that is correct, then use the replace option on the roof to separate the two pieces from each other. Moving along, over arches. These pieces are easy to float, and also just as easy to get locked into a codependent state if you do not have a foundation to tie back to when it comes time to remove them. But don't worry, there's a fix for that. We floated a pair of overarches in the stairs tutorial, but this time we're going to deliberately float them in a codependent state. Let's go ahead and build a half wall and two slanted roofs facing each other. Now. Let's snap in our two over arches. There are multiple points of support here, 
From the base, it goes foundation, wall. Then the support goes both ways at the roof, tying to both arches. And the arches are tied together as well. So, let's go ahead and delete one roof. As we know, the arches are supporting each other. And on the other side, there is a roof tying support back to the wall and foundation. Now, if we try to remove any other part in the support chain, we get the cannot remove error. But what's directly supporting our arch? A roof. We can directly disconnect the support with the replace option. Let's go ahead and do that. Now our arch is floating. But what if we need to delete it? If your foundation is still aligned, you can simply build back support and delete it from the last point in the support chain working backwards. But what if you deleted the foundation? We can't build back to it because Bethesda patched out the ability to build in reverse using the bottom side of a roof or wall as a snapping point. What do we do? This is a potentially camp breaking situation. However, if you have the log building set, we have a path to salvation. Using the replace option, we can switch one side of the opposite orientation piece with the log set, disconnecting the codependent pieces from one another, allowing you to delete the arches. Crisis avoided. Unless Bethesda patches this. <clears throat> Anyways, so we've covered full walls, roofs, arches, and over arches. Let's move on to half walls and slants. These operate with the same rules, however there's a trick with the slants that I'm going to cover in a minute. Let's float a half wall. You've seen this done in my deck and fence tutorial, but to recap, just simply break the half wall you want to float and it will detach, allowing you to remove the support under it and float. Same goes for slants. This does not work with the log building set. You have to build a different wall type and once it's floating, you can replace to the log set after it's repaired. But as mentioned earlier, the log set has its own loopholes that we can use. Say you want to float a slant. All you have to do is use the replace option once it's in place. And you can separate the support by swapping to the slant that faces the opposite direction. <clears throat> Provided Bethesda doesn't patch this either. Now it's floating. And once you've deleted the support, you can replace it back. Lastly, I want to cover wall merging again, but show a few examples of the many different combinations that can be made using this technique. Using barn walls, let's go ahead and build two halves and break them. Now, let's build a full barn wall inside the broken halves. Now with the repair and replace option, we can build many different combinations of wall to suit any build. Here are a couple of examples. Don't be afraid to experiment with combining broken walls too. The possibilities really are endless. I hope you found today's tutorial video helpful and inspiring. If you like what I'm doing here, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. Also, like this video and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss future build videos and tutorials. Once again, I want to say thank you to all of you for helping my channel grow. So until next time, this is Stole Your Sweet Roll, signing off. Have a great day and happy building.